Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. Welcome into the Sports Fanatic News Philadelphia Phillies versus New York Mets. Phillies win the series. Series recap as I am Joe Boric, aka Projo, joined by the fantastic. We have to come up with a great nickname for this guy, Andrew. Hey, you're, you're, Hello. You're the nickname um, creator, so you just let me know. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, as we're thinking of that, it probably takes me days to think of that. Uh, how you doing this evening before we get started and dive into the three games in this year's series? I'm doing very well, very well. I kind of asked for a better start to this season. We're about to dive into it, but when Phillies are playing good baseball, it makes life better, and that's where, uh, that's where we're sitting at right now pretty much. Yep, yep. So in the first game, as we dive right into it on Monday the 5th, um, our Philadelphia Phillies were able to win 5-3, to three, where Matt Moore through the first two innings looked great. <laughs> And then the next two innings, not so much, where I think the third inning um, really uh, drained him there um, in terms of letting him go any further and really have any oomph by the time he got through the fourth with the amount of pitches he threw there in the third. But before we move into the rest of that game, uh, what did you just think of Moore's performance? And do you agree with me that you think the third inning had a big uh, negative effect on uh, him going any deeper into that game? <clears throat> Yeah, without question. I, I think Matt Moore, obviously, we all know he's been out of the league for a little bit now. You couldn't expect him to go full like full game, or like six, seven innings for his first game back. I think it did get to him. And listen, that's not an easy offense to go out there and face your first game back. I mean, you're asking him first game back in the major league since moving from overseas. You're asking him to go face the high-powered offense in a Francisco Lindor, a Pete Alonso, we all know who has the power. Lindor has been an MVP candidate. James McCann, obviously one of the best catchers in the game right now. Uh, definitely probably top three. I think you'd agree with me on that. Just don't know where. Uh, without question, top five. I don't think you can argue that part because he's so locked into that top five. Uh, so this is already – not only that, you're facing a high-powered offense. You're going up against uh, the best – arguably one of the best pitchers DeGrom. in the game on yeah. top of that, Jacob DeGrom. I think the one spot I was disappointed with him uh, was letting DeGrom get the two hits and DeGrom get to walk. So you let the, their opposing pitcher get on base three out of his four at-bats. I think that's an area you could have easily avoided, um, at, which would have changed changed your dynamic of that game tremendously. I mean, for DeGrom to go out there, have two hits and an RBI, which I thought was two RBIs at first, but that – it's not uh but anyway which isn't the first time he's done that because DeGrom, yeah, no, DeGrom like Zach Wheeler can hit yeah yeah so I just think it was it was asking a tall price I mean if you went in that matchup I mean we talked about it on the phone over the weekend outside of us recording and we we're like yeah the Mets obviously have an advantage after the COVID weekend they had because they got DeGrom and uh Stroman going against our four and five starters but you know what more went out there did what he had to do yeah it wasn't the prettiest game but he kept you in the game uh, we all know, we all been saying the Phillies offense should be pretty good. So he gave you two runs or kept you in the game, only giving up two runs. And he asked the, to win, he asked the offense to come alive at some point, And they did. Yeah. Um, yeah. He was able to do uh, what he had to do. Like I said, as you were flying back to Oklahoma in the preview I did um, for the series, I thought the first game was even with the pitching match of kind of a 50, 50, just because the Mets were coming in with completely dry legs not playing since other than a simulated game, which is not remotely close to the same, uh, not playing since spring training. So I thought it was more close-knit there, 50-50. That ended up kind of coming to fruition as, uh, as uh, I almost said uh, time, uh, time again. I don't know where I got that from. As James McCann um, was the guy that got their uh, offense started, and then uh, Jake DeGrom, as you aforementioned, was able to single – I'm um, in the fourth, and then four innings later, as the Mets are prone to do, do d did Mets things, and uh, blew the game and gave the game to us. Is um, former Philly Aaron Loop uh, hit Bryce Harper with a curve curveball. He was generous to throw a curveball and not a fastball. There, you know, nice guy. Um, and then you had JT single, which scored Roman Quinn, which is about the only thing Roman Quinn is doing this this year so this far as scoring runs. Um, and then you have um, Alec Bohm reached on a fielder's choice that scored Bryce Harper in that inning, plus Didi hit a sack fly that scored, um, who did that, um, scored JT Real Muto. And then that made it 5-2 to two until Conforto on a single in the ninth. 
uh, made it five to three, which was off of Alvarado before he closed the deal there and got the save. So those are the offensive numbers. But I think the bigger part of this game was um, before we move into the next game, in short, how great the bullpen did. The bullpen obviously won you this game. Yes, your offense got going late, but the bullpen picked up Matt Moore tremendously where Kinsler immediately, excuse me, got a double play and had a strikeout, went one and a two-thirds innings. Poonrod came in and went two innings and had three strikeouts with no walks, only allowed a hit. And Brogdon came in, went an inning, only or allowed no hits, excuse me, and had one strikeout. And then Alvarado came in and got the save. Yes, he around 1-1, but had two Ks. You saw the great movement on his stuff. So in a, a short, what did you think of just how finally, after a historically atrocity, atrocious bullpen, we actually saw our bullpen be the reason we won a game? Yeah, I think it's been more than that, honestly. And that's something I came in here ready to say is, uh, I mean, you sit here and ask me why, why should we be excited after only six games of the year? And I say exactly that. I, I think the bullpen... That going to yeah. be a later question, but yeah, sure, we can answer that. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Um, no, I think, again, I think obviously we know the offense. Yeah, they got off to a slow start, but what do you expect? I mean, it's the beginning of the year. You're going up against top. I mean, if you think about it, we're the only team, we're one of the only teams in the league at this point where you had to face the number one and two pitchers out of both teams or in both series so far. So you ask mm-hmm. me, you ask me, yeah, the offense did get off to a slow start so far this year, but you know what? That's what's going to happen when you're going against the best of the best. And that's what happened going against Max Free, Jacob DeGrom already, Marcus Stroman. So you kind of figured it would be a slow start to the year. So why are we excited? Because of this bullpen turnaround. I, I already can count, I think, three if not four games already out of these five wins that you probably would have lost last year because of the bullpen. And you already won them this year. 110%. Like, I think that's already incredible to think about. Like, And that's something I know me and you and us also on Chase and the Pennant we kind of all talked about was – you you were winning 83% of your games last year, and then you ended up lo- losing over 50%. Like, how crazy is that? Like, that shows where you're at there. So, obviously, that they finally did in the offseason what we've been asking for for it feels like the last 10 years. And, listen, it's already shown the, the price of having it. I mean, you look at game one. Yeah, Aaron Nola ended up giving that home run, but then you had the bullpen come in and throw, what, four scoreless innings, I think it was, including that extra inning when you had to start the runner on second. So, very impressive to get out of that. You had this game, as you just mentioned, Matt Moore, uh, I mean, he came out after in the in the fourth inning, and then he come out and finish there and get that win. And then I'll save the rest for my next one for when we get to uh, game three of this series because obviously that was a big part today. So I'll wait to mm-hmm. talk about that one. But the, yeah, no, the bullpen's been tremendous, and the the big part here it is you can already tell it's not relying on one guy this year. I feel like that was another issue with last year or two years ago when you got Harper. Kind of your bullpen, you were always relying on one or two guys, so you had to use them, use them, use them. By the end of the year, they're worn out. I mean, you can only throw so much. I feel like that's already what's different this year with this pen. Is listen, I, I know we kind of had. He has had the best command, and he's get, his whip is probably a high number right now. But Jose Alvarado, he still finds a way to get the job done. He's got a save already. You can rely on him for his fast. You, uh, Connor Brogdon, obviously, already you, three wins are already oh, tremendous. Good, yeah. You can already you know, tell you can rely on him. Archie Bradley, you can tell you can rely on him. Now, listen, Hector Neris, he's he is what he is. Yes, people don't like all the guys you're going to allow on base. But Kinsley, you, know you can rely on too. I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was. I, I had him yeah. down too. Um, but no, yeah, Neris. Again, he's going to give up base runners, but you know what? Right now, he's getting the guys out. He, uh, he's probably giving up a lot of base runners this year already, but he's still got an ERA of zero, knock on wood. No, I did not just jinx it uh, oh, if something <laughs> bad happens on Friday. Well, do not come back to this video. But no, then obviously at Kinsler, he's also been very reliable already this year. So it's just been incredible. And again, you, you can account for three or four wins already because of this bullpen. Exactly. But anyway, we'll move into that's recapping your uh, first game where the Philadelphia Phillies are Phillies able to take it five to three. Uh, the second game was the one where it was not so good. Um, our Phillies lost eight to four. Their only loss of the season this far on Tuesday, where Chase Anderson is hard to say he even made one mistake pitch because that was outside by about yeah. a foot and a half. And Dominic Smith just drilled it to opposite field. Um, so he actually, I thought, um, looked pretty good through five innings. He got taken out at where to go, where to go, where to go. Uh, I can't figure out where his pitch count went, but he was uh, 80. 80. He got taken out at 80. Okay, he probably could have went in for the six, but he pitched five pretty decent innings, uh, two hits, two walks, uh, three strikeouts. Um, that again, I don't think that pitch was on him. I mean, that was a pitch that was outside. He was just able to somehow. That was good hitting by Dominic Smith. Um, this was the one game 
that I don't even necessarily want to say our bullpen did not show up because it was Vince Velasquez and David Hale. Um, but uh, this was the one game the two guys that are the lower two of our bullpen, let's put it that way, <laughs> um, right. did not show up after Vince Velasquez came in or after Anderson came out, I meant, where Velasquez had a great first inning, a la Vince Velasquez, and then sucked in his second inning in the seventh and just gave up runs on runs on runs on runs. Um, where when you look at the seventh, he walked Nimmo. Um, Lindor got a, a sacrifice fly. Um, by that point, that that was Kinsler pitching, but that was the last run that ended up uh, going to Vinny since he was in when Nimmo walked, I believe, because I think the uh, Conforto double when uh, – oh, no, Nimmo scored on the Conforto double, so that would have been the last run that actually went on his line. Um, so those runs run on his lines, uh, Kinsler let a couple inherited runners score. So that wasn't as pretty of a game for him, but it was really Velasquez, uh, got them going. He got the Mets offense going in that game. So before we move any further, um, this was kind of asked to Batalico and everybody today leading into this game, since it was only his first game in the bullpen. Uh, I'll phrase it differently like this. Do we have, should we give Velasquez a couple more games? And if so, how many to figure it out in the bullpen since it's not starting, it is different? Or is he, like John Crook mentioned on the telecast, kind of at this short leash period just because you've seen what you've got and he hasn't shown anything yet with the uh, high hopes you had for him once you brought him in year in and year out? Yeah, I mean, listen, it, it is obviously early in the season. Obviously, yeah, he could turn it around. It, it, like you said, he's got a new position. But here's my thing. This guy's been on this team for, I mean, I don't know how. I mean, it feels like forever at this point. I think it's time. He has to have a short leash. I mean, how, how much can you really ask from for this guy? How, how many more opportunities can you give him? And don't get me wrong. I'm all for second chances. I'm all for all that. But, like, you, you look at this guy. He's had – Time after time after time. I mean, you look at his time with Houston before he got here. In 2015, 4.37 ERA and 55 innings of work and seven starts, 19 games. So that's seven starts, 19 games. He's been in the pen before. That's 12 relief appearances right there. Comes over to the Phillies in 16. 4.12 ERA, not awful as a five starter. 17 of 5.13, bad. 2018, 4.85, 19, 4.91, and then last year, 5.56. And he had some bullpen uh, outings last year as well. So, listen, I'll give him more than one. Don't get me wrong, because obviously, yeah, one's a tough spot. But, no, he absolutely has to be on a short leash. He only – because, listen, yes, he's, he's going to have limited opportunities this year. But let's face it, he still came in in a big spot in that game on Tuesday. We're, we're going to win that game? Maybe not. But, listen, he comes in the game. It's only 2 nothing at the time. You're still in position to, to win that game. And that's where I forget – Forget who it was. I think it was on. I forget which game. I think it might have been on the Sunday broadcast. Maybe, maybe uh, Saturday. I can't remember uh, which announcer it was. But they kind of brought up a good point. That's where managers get have a tough spot when you do pull your pitcher and you're losing two or three nothing. It's like, okay, yeah, you don't want to waste your your top notch guys. You're gonna have to use some of your back end guys in situations just to give the other guys rest because you're losing. But you're still obviously in the game to win, so you can't fully just give away the game at that point. So that's where. And we also use the other guys. Our main guys were used in most of the other games already exactly. coming into this so, game. So that, that's a spot you need to give those guys a break. So you need a guy that can come in and get those outs. Because let's face it, with this offense, two runs is nothing. Like, like I'm just being real. Like I don't care which pitcher you're facing, because uh, I mean, eventually you're going to probably scrap scrap runs out. Like whether it's earn hits, whether it's an error, because like, these guys are going to put the ball in play. And you look at this lineup, I mean, you just get Harper draws a walk, and you have JT hitting after him. You have JT draw a walk, D.D. Gregorius is after him. Two runs, again, is nothing for this team. Like, if you're down two runs, whether it's the first or ninth inning, no one can, I mean, I know I'm not going to be sitting here, okay, this game's probably over yet, because in two swings of the bat, this game could be tied. And that's where that, that really hurts you, if you're going to have Vince give up those kind of runs, because, yeah, it might not seem like it because you're losing, but I mean, Vince giving up those four runs uh, in that inning kind of put the game out of reach at that point. And excuse me, it wasn't 2 nothing when he came in the game. It was 2-1. So that's even closer. Yeah. You're down one run. So that's a spot you need, Vince. Because D.D. hit that home run in the fourth uh, inning. Yeah. yeah, that made it 2-1 so, before that uh, 
so four that, to one uh, by the or, or actually six to one by the end of the seventh inning, I should say. Yes, yeah, so that's where that's a big spot because you keep that door down. You score in the bottom of the seventh inning. Obviously, would have tied it. You get two in the ninth inning as well. So again, and uh, listen, I completely understand that nobody's going to go perfect. There's no pitcher going to have a zero year right. I'm saying though. He hasn't shown signs of changing because he did the same thing. Of I mean, 40 pitches and not even two innings. So he's still throwing all those pitches. And we'll see what he's able to do. But I'll, I'll give him more than – Yeah. Again, he's going to get more than one outing from me. But, yes, it has to be a short leash in my opinion. And I think it's just because of what's happened in the past. I will also say this. I, I mean, I get giving guys off. But you came off an off day last Friday after a full off season, And then you have an off day Thursday – I was surprised about some of the, and I'm not ripping on them. Obviously, we're five and one at this point, not complaining. But I was just surprised and shocked by a lot of the benchings, not benchings, but the rest days he was giving guys already. I mean, Joyce is already starting a game. You have Bohm leave the game early with a uh, kind of doing a double switch was odd. Brad Miller gets to stop, start instead of Hoskins. So that was odd. Too. I feel like uh, it's it, because the team early on, yes, we have two off days. But going forward, your only off day is the 22nd. And after that, your next off day is not till May 10th. Yeah. So, so I, yeah, you're, you're probably, right. I just thought it was really um, odd the way they forward. handled that whole situation. So we'll see what happens. But no, I'm not. I mean, I was, again, I'm not going to complain here because obviously you're going to give guys off. I just was shocked the amount of players and how early they, they all kind of got those days. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I was okay with that. I was surprised how many guys were in, but Joyce ended up drawing a lot of good at-bats. He was one of the positives in that, drawing two walks, and then also a positive to take out of this game is how good Didi with a home run and uh, Reese Hoskins, our first baseman, have looked early getting a single. Um, that also, again, um, Reese has been hitting the ball to all fields this year, too, which is pivotal to see. He's kind of going with the pitch, which is when he's at his best, so that's good to see. And then he also had a double, um, which was good as well. And we'll get into it more, obviously, for the next game, but that was a nice sign to see, even in an off game. Didi and Reese were still able to show up. Joyce put together a couple good at-bats as well. But before we move past this game, since he hasn't pitched for a whole calendar year, um, since he decided to be one of the guys to play it safe last year, which rightfully so, um, whoever wanted to do that had the decision to do that. And then this was also a game the Mets bullpen stepped up, I should say. Castro pitched one clean, well, one inning he gave up the one earned run. May pitched a clean inning, and then Familia gave up one run but closed it out. Um, were you surprised how good Stroman's command was coming back from not pitching since 2019? and able to just go in and easily, like, seemingly easily throw strikes or throw it around the zone and actually be able to get through six innings? Not necessarily as command, because I think, like, as a pitcher and a veteran pitcher, you're probably going to throw those strikes. I was more surprised how effective his pitches were, meaning the movement on him and everything, and how much he was able to fool, fool uh, the Phillies hitters. I was thinking more his command would be there. He's going to be throwing a lot of strikes, but I thought he was going to be – not maybe not have his velocity fully back yet. I was thinking he was going to be leaving pitches around the plate and missing key spots, leaving him for the Phillies to kind of hit him around a little bit if they were going to get to him. So not necessarily like a man. I was just more surprised how effective his pitches were and the movement they were, and he was able to uh, paint the dots pretty clean that day. Yeah, no, I was too because, I mean, Stroh's obviously always been a good pitcher, but – for not pitching for a whole calendar year and coming in like that, uh, that's pretty damn impressive, Absolutely. that's for sure. But uh, we can move into the next game, the best game of the series, an 8-2 to two blowout of these uh, pesky New York Mets heading into the off day. A good way to head into the off day, uh, you know, have some good wine, um, and then uh, talk about um, whatever the hell you have to do to get ready for the next series. Um, so cool. I, th I think the big thing in this game was – you had Reese Hoskins come in right away, uh, hit that home run, which was a big thing, going with the pitch again, hitting it just into the seats and right. I don't know why this is center field on MLB TV. Uh, that was the right <laughs> field to go with it. Um, and uh, he got it just into the seats going with the pitch. I love how he's hitting this year and more attacking where the pitch is and also playing more. He's still drawing good counts, but playing more aggressive and jumping on pitches he should rather than looking at pitches he shouldn't look at, which is how he drew deep counts at times in the past. Um, so I like what I've seen from him. And then Boom smoked one off of the back wall um, in that like jutted corner that they have 
uh, to left center field um, over that corner in CBP. So we were up four to nothing on David Peterson um, in the first inning. Uh, what did you think of that first inning of uh, being able to jump out uh, for Nola there and then being able to really get that offense going early um, when obviously this is the first game that's actually has happened for our offense this season? Yeah, absolutely. It's huge. I think, again, I mentioned earlier, you, you saw a slow start to the season from this lineup, and I wasn't worried. Uh, and you know how much I love Reese Hoskins, and I will continue to say it. This guy is one of the most underrated players uh, in this city. Uh, he doesn't. He never gets enough credit. You see a lot of hate for him, but, I mean, I think he just goes out there, he, he hits the ball, and, yeah, when he's not hitting, he, he might miss some pitches here and there. But the thing is, when he's not hitting, he still finds ways to get on base. Reese Hoskins is a key to this offense, getting on base at that two-spot as it looks like he's going to stay for probably most of the season once again. I mean, he's got to be able to get on, and he'll be able to score runs. And, and I will continue to say it, he, he's still undervalued. He's, he, I always compare him right now to the city as Tobias Harris. I mean, this team can go. I mean, yeah, you know what you're going to get out of Harper and JT. You know what you're going to get out of Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. It's where's that third guy going to come from. And I whoa, really whoa, think- whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We know what we're going to get out of Joel Embiid. <laughs> so, so anyway, go on. You know what you're getting out of Ben Simmons. <laughs> Um, but no, I think again, I, I think Hoskins and Harris go in, in comparison and you know how much I love the both of them. I think Hoskins, again, he, he just goes out there and hits. Yeah. His fielding might be up and down, but he's, he's not, I mean, he's probably average, maybe a little below average, but his fielding isn't horrible. He might be have to, uh, scoop, uh, plays a little bit more, a little better, but outside of that, I think he's a key to this offense. You're going to go pretty, I mean, as long as if he's hitting like this, you're going to be hit going pretty far. Uh, it's only six games in, but 417 through the first week of the season is a pretty good number for him. Already has a lot of extra base hits. He had uh, the home run today, so that, that had to be a nice feeling for him. So I'm excited to see where he goes with this season. I, I'll continue my high expectations with him, and I think he'll be just fine. But I think as a whole, this offense looked really good today. Alec Bohm, we, see, we saw him struggle a little bit out of the gate here early on in, in the season, but it was huge for him to get that home run. You're driving through RBIs, you put up a big four spot, and you couldn't ask for anything more uh, when you have your, your ace on the mound there going today. And, and I think the last thing on the offense is it's pretty incredible uh, what, what this offense was able to do today. I mean, you look at the top, the first six hitters on this team today all had at least one hit in the game uh, from McCutcheon to Gregorius there in the top six. I, w- I did think it was kind of odd they took Didi out because, I mean, his defense isn't bad. So I thought that was a weird defensive move late in the game. So I hope he's okay. But we'll, we'll see what happens there. But, yeah, JT had a hit. Al Boma obviously had a hit. Gregorius had a hit. Harper had two. And Hoskins had three. McCutcheon one. So very excited to see that at the top of the order. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that was just to get Ronald to raise his feet wet a bit since he was the only guy in all the games he played that had no uh, action yet at all. So I, they could have just been like, hey, we're up 8-2. to two. If we could, if they come back in this game, that's on our pitching. And I don't think Didi Gregorius would have done much about it. Uh, so I feel like that was just kind of one of those things at that point. But yeah, that's a good uh, that's a good observation. But I think a big thing in this game, too, um, I love, again, like you said, everything about Hoskins I agree with. I love how he's going with the pitches and not just getting pool happy and looking at pitches you shouldn't look at. But Boehm hit a home run you wouldn't really expect him to hit because he's more of those liner homer guys. Well, that was a liner, but that was a high arcing liner that drilled the back wall. So to, that seems like that one of those home runs that's a future Alec Boehm. Like you might start <laughs> seeing a couple years down the line a little bit more consistently. But that was definitely... Uh, nice to see. And then for the Mets, uh, they got their scoring from Pete Alonzo um, singling uh, to Adam Hazley, which scored uh, Brandon Nimmo. Um, and then we got our scoring again by another guy that's hot as a firecracker this year, um, JT Real Muto, the best catcher in baseball, uh, hitting a fly ball to right center field, also going with the pitch that Hoskins, while having a great day at the plate, also was able to score a run here, as well as Bryce Harper. Um, so, um, what have you thought of uh, JT, who's uh, starting really hot this year? According to MLB, it's just 3.33 um, after his day today um, with one home run and six RBIs and a 963 OPS. Uh, we already talked about Boom and Haas. Uh, what do you think of uh, JT uh, this year this far? He seems to be really swinging the bat with ease. And we have to remember, he was injured too. And he seems to be swinging the bat pretty well. 
And before today, Hazley came in at, I think, 343. So it's really odd that they, I think they mentioned this in one of the broadcasts in pregame, the two guys that were injured that didn't swing as much started the season uh, hitting with a very high average where some guys like Kutch, who played the spring, and guys like um, Harper, who just brought it up to 263 today, who played the spring, were not swinging as hot. That's, I guess that's just the way sports works, but that that's uh, kind of funny. But uh, what did you think of JT this for? Yeah, that's baseball for you. That's the fun of the game. You don't really know what's going to happen. The, the odd things the odd things are the ones that really get you in, in baseball. So I think, no, I think it was a, a fun day to, to watch these guys. And as far as JT goes, he looks locked in. It doesn't look like he's missed the beat at all. And that's why he's considered the best catcher in baseball. I mean, this guy knows how to just go out there and hit the ball. He knows what the team needs from him. He knows how to hit for average, knows how to hit for power, but he's always locked in. And that's one thing I really like about JT is, and you'll say it too, I'm sure, is this guy never takes a game, a game off. This guy never takes a playoff. He's always out there for the next play, whether it's coming off a mistake, whether it's coming off a, a three-run home run. He's always ready to roll. I think that's what really makes it exciting that we brought him back. And um, It's only six games in, but I, I'm pretty sure he's going to live up to that contract. Yeah, no, JT's uh, going to live up to that contract. I agree. He had three RBIs on the day. Uh, Reese Hoskins had uh, three hits on the day. And then Harper had two hits on the day. So all those guys uh, doing really good um, up there. And then Alec Boehm had three RBIs on the day as well. Um, The big part of this game was unusual. Um, Aaron Nola um, did not. He only gave up one run, but it pitched 92 um, pitches by the time he came out. After the fourth inning was not sharp today. Um, but then the bullpen yet again, and the best pitcher in baseball to start the season thus far, uh, Connor Brogdon, um, was able to pick up his third win of the season. And then Archie Bradley came in and pitched one and a third, two hits, one run, two punches. And then Sam Coonrod, who looks like he might be set to have his best season if he can keep carrying his spring into this season, which he's done this far, pitched one frame, no runs. And then Nearest came in, which was kind of odd um, since uh, yeah, there was wasn't yeah. as much of a reason to need him to come in. But Nearest came in, did very well, allowed one hit, got out of it. Um, so their bullpen picked him up again. Uh, Connor Brogdon's on his way to win the Cy Young and maybe the Rookie of the Year. So, you know, good for him. Um, but what did you think of, again, as we wrap up this video, we're going long, it'll probably be about a half-hour series <laughs> recap. But um, as we series. wrap this up and give our final points, what did you just think of the bullpen being the Lord and Savior along with the offense, obviously in this affair, but the bullpen as well being the Lord and Savior of this team after we were so disappointed in our bullpen last season and seasons prior? Yeah, first off, I want to start with this. Let's start before I get into that bullpen. Let me start with Nola. I think this is some. I want to talk about because, yeah, obviously he didn't have his command fully today. Two walks is unusual for him. Four innings is unusual. Six hits in four innings is unusual as well, obviously. But here's the one thing. I'm going to spin this in a positive direction. And I know eventually this season at some point he'll have a bad outing where he gives up five or six rounds because everybody has it. I mean, it's a long season. I think the key for me, though, in this outing is, I mean, I didn't get a chance to listen to the post game, but I'm sure he said it. He didn't have his best stuff today, and we can all agree with that. But you know what? He didn't have his best stuff, but he found a way to spin this start into a fairly, I'm going to, I got to be careful what I'm going to say, but a fairly positive one in, in a way as well. Because, yes, he only lasted four innings and he had jam after jam after jam, but he didn't let that, like, he didn't let that get to him. He didn't let that change his emotion. That didn't let him change his face of the game at all. He still went out there and was still able to make an effective pitch to get out of the inning. And I, and I forget what inning it, what exact, inning it exactly was, but I remember us texting during the game, and it got to the point, and we texted each other. We need a, It was right after the game, the, the first run. We were like, okay, it needs a double play to get out of this inning. But what did he do? He, he got back-to-back -back strikeouts to get out of a – I think it was a first and third jam. And then the next – One was on Lindor, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. So. And then the next inning, what happens? Bases loaded jam. And what does he do? He gets out of it without allowing another run. So while, yes, obviously I'm not going to sit here and try to spin it where he didn't have a bad game. No, he had an off game. He didn't have his command. But he was able to stay locked in and still make those key pitches when he needed them. And obviously, yes, we need him to go more than four innings. But he he battled, if, I think the key phrase to use for this game would be he battled through the game 
well. Exactly. Uh, but you obviously want to see him go deeper uh, going forward. But if you want him to have a bad start, you would rather have it be a bad start. He pitches above 90 and only gives up one through four rather than seven runs through four innings. And then you can't really catch up because your offense has to really play catch up at that point. Well, exactly. And the kind of way to spin it right now is his counterpart. Don't get me wrong. Obviously, Peterson's nowhere near NOLA talent, but they pitched the same amount of innings. The difference was Peterson didn't spin himself out of the innings. He still he gave up six runs in four innings, while NOLA was able to spin himself out of it and only give up one in those six innings. Because if you look at the number lines, I mean, actually, they're, they're very similar if you compare them. Peterson, four innings. NOLA, four. Uh, Peterson, seven hits. NOLA, six. Runs six to one, obviously, favored NOLA. Both with two walks both with five strikeouts. So, again, that, that's kind of where I'm going at is how effective that ended up being. And then, yeah, this is one of those wins where – or yeah, this is one of those wins I was like, alluding to early on in the show. We don't win this game last year. Yeah, you got out to a 4-0 lead, but if Nola's coming out in the fourth inning, you're going to give up multiple runs by the end of the game there from the bullpen. But what did you say? Well, like you said, Brogdon. I hope everyone uh, took took a double-digit win total for him this year because he's already at three, not even not – even, uh, six or seven games into the year, so we'll see what he's at. He'll get ten wins at, at this rate. Place your best paper. for rookie of the year, <laughs> right? <laughs> but uh, no, yeah, obviously Archie Bradley gives up a run, but even that it was a wild pitch. Outside of that, you probably see him maybe work out of that jam. Uh, just an unusual play there. It's also him. a wild pitch. I'm not blaming obviously JT on that. That's a hard play for the catcher, but I think usually he probably would not have let that get away from him. He yeah. kind of blocked that weird in his body and then it rolled away i feel like most of the time maybe not nine out of ten but at least eight out of ten he probably wouldn't let that bounce the other um way but um go ahead uh, what are your closing points um, on the bullpen my closing point yeah, again i think i allude at least three or four wins at least five already to that bullpen obviously brogdon's hogging up all of them with three uh, three and no start there, so I, I think it's incredible because not only that, you're not even just seeing outs; you're seeing them effective outs, strikeouts as well. I know, uh, obviously, Alvarado didn't pitch today, but I mean, we saw a couple jams he's been already. And what did he do? He only just threw 101 miles per hour and struck guys out to get out of it. What did uh, I mean? Archie Bradley today again, not his best stuff, but he ends it with two two strikeouts and not even two full innings of work. So obviously, a nice positive there. Brogdon two strikeouts and in a little less than two innings of work as well. So while these guys, yes. Obviously, they like to give us heart attacks and make us uh, turn a little older, a little faster, and give up jams. But, yeah, they're going to give up hits here and there. I think that's just kind of where these guys are at. But the difference is from last year, we're not giving up the runs. Like, yeah, again, Brogdon two hits, Bradley two hits, Naris another hit in this yeah. game. But the thing is, again, they're finding effective pitches and finding ways to get out of the Well, unless if you're Coonrod, because Coonrod's whip is a point three three through three games. Oh, yeah. So, it is always the exception. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm excited. I think uh, again, I said it coming in the year. I don't know if we're fully going to make the playoffs. Uh, obviously, with how tough this division is, but I think uh, there's a lot to be excited for. Fans should be. I mean, I know this is the most excited I've been in a very long time for a Philly season, and I think it's only going to continue to trend upward uh, as the season goes on. I think everyone's going to find the rhythm even more, get locked in, and, and again. I, Call me an overreactor through six games, but no, I think this this is going to be an exciting year of baseball. Whether it's a a late late round push to get into the playoffs or just keeping the season interesting uh, into that last game of the year. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that in our Phillies and Braves uh, series preview. We do if we think these games to start adjusted uh, predictions or if it's still too early. That Rob asked me on the Chase and the Pennant podcast. Check out that on the Always Next Year Network as well. That all of us, uh, Andrew's on that as well. Uh, everybody does great work. Sean Biscuit uh, on there. Also, uh, this has been the Phillies versus New York Metro. We won 5-3 to three on Monday, lost 8-4 to four on Tuesday, and then crushed them with scoring eight runs ourselves to two today to win the series three games to two against those New York uh, Metropolitans. Um, and now we have an off day before we head down, well, to head down to Atlanta. That's why we have the off day. And then the Phillies play the Braves Friday through Saturday, which will be previewed by us. That will be the video coming out after this one. So stay tuned for that. We thank you for joining us for this. Please like, comment, and subscribe. We really appreciate your support. Thanks for joining for the Philadelphia Phillies versus New York Mets series preview by Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Boric for Andrew Santangelo. Follow him at AJ underscore Santangelo on Twitter and me at JJ Boric 26. Have a great, safe, and pleasant week, everybody. Go Phillies and enjoy all the great baseball action. Peace out, everybody.